Alara. I'm sorry about Syrian. It's hard. At least I got to talk to him at the end. The real him. That's something. But I'm sure it still hurts. If anything happened to Hassan. Cherish him while you can. That's the truth. So, the other Griffins, you decided what to do with them, right? Yeah, they'll be happier in the forest. And who knows, maybe they'll drop in if we need them. Right, oh, that's great, but uh, just to be sure, you didn't find an extra one, did you? Ballara, you can't have a Griffin. I, I didn't say anything. You don't have to. So, why did they do it? Make an entire copy of Weishaupt, I mean. Probably a memory of home was the last thing they recalled before the Blight took over. They were trying to relive that life, but didn't know how. Well, that's very, very creepy, and also kind of makes sense in a weird way. The joys of being a warden survive the battle, and there's excitement to follow. What do Veil Jumpers usually eat? Whatever Arleth and Force provides, pretty much. So, a lot of grilled hollow, then. Bite your tongue. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's mostly plants. Lots and lots of plants, with the occasional salad on the side. How does someone become a Veil Jumper? Simple. You survive Arleth and Forest. That's it? The energies in Arlethan are... Uh, Wrong. Like, reality got scrambled. It's dangerous. Not everyone can stand it. So if you can, then you've got what it takes. Sounds a lot like Grey Wardens. Except for the Archdemons and Griffins. Oh, wish we had a few of those. How many Veil Jumpers are there? It's hard to tell. It's a secret? Well, no. Maybe it should be. But it changes every day. Some get killed, some go missing. Some just leave. Who joins up for those kinds of odds? Grey Wardens have better odds. Good point. So why do you do it, Ballara? Why be a Veil Jumper? Lots of reasons. Some personal, some not. But really? This is my home. It's in trouble. I can't just do nothing. Now I can relate. It's good to fight for a cause. And all the artifacts we find? The things they can do, it's incredible. They can change the world. Or destroy it. Well, I haven't slipped up. Not yet. Do you ever go back and see your clan, Davrin? Not since I left the forest. Well, I did drop in on Uncle Eldrin, but he lives on his own. So, you don't see family or friends? No, been a long time. Does that bother you? I'm the one who left. That's on me. You must miss them. It comes and goes. Different part of my life. So, you're a warden now, but you're also Dalish, right? Or at least you were? I'll always be Dalish. That'll never change. The sight of an Aravel still brings back memories. Good ones? Some. Racing them through the forest as fast as the wind would take us. I love doing that. Then breaking my arm when our Aravel sailed off a ridge. I love that too. Oh, good times. Uh, if you say so. Ballara, how does someone have a good time breaking their arm on an Aravel? No, that part hurt. Broke both of them, actually. Then I passed out. Sounds like a real party. It's what came after. Learning the remedies, seeing how a bit of uh, that bark mixed with a dash of this flower could heal. You sound like Harding in her garden. But all the little pieces came together, made something new and better. It's why I love tinkering. Do you ever regret leaving your clan, Davrin? I don't regret the life I've lived, joining the Wardens. The things I've seen and done. There's a but in there. But sometimes I wish I could have done both. Not much room for that. No. You're either part of the clan, giving yourself over to it, or you're not. I made my choice. The thing about being Dalish, I needed to see the rest of the world to understand why the Dalish part of it was special. In what way? 
I didn't appreciate my life at the time. How could I? A clan sticks to itself, and you stick to the clan. Not much room for seeing what's outside it. Right. I get that. When I was little, very little, I mean, we'd pass through towns and villages. I, I always wondered, what's that like? To settle down, to stop moving all the time. Right. Have a house to call your own. Shop at the market instead of foraging for food. Make friends with outsiders. But you got that chance. You did it. How was it? It was... different. So how different was life outside your clan? I started to see what I took for granted. I missed the food. They didn't have any where you went? Dalish food. You don't appreciate hollow milk till you don't have any. Butter too. Nothing like it in Thetis. What about the people? I miss the sense of a common purpose. A clan acting as one. Everywhere else, people were in it for themselves. It's a reason I joined the Grey Wardens. Yes, I needed that purpose again. The shared fight. So all these ancient elven relics you study, Bilara, how do you figure out what they do? A lot of poking around, flipping switches, see what happens. That's... random. It's not like there's anyone left to tell me how it works. What if you flip a switch and demons pour out of the Fade? I'd flip the switch the other way. That simple? Well, not usually, but at least it stops the demons. You ever have a relic do something unexpected? Yes, but no. Well, but yes, and no. That clears it up. A relic is only doing what it was designed to do. It's just being used wrong. How do you know it's being used right? Usually when my ears stop ringing, my eyes aren't watering, and my brain isn't vibrating. <laughs> Always a good sign. What's the most useful relic you found in all your veil jumping? There was this weird one buried in a crypt. What did it do? It had this little knob thing on the end that rotated real fast. I realized I could use it to brush my teeth. Wait. Our ancient elven ancestors built a magical toothbrush? And then buried it with a dead guy. Got any relics that'll help with monster hunting? Hmm. There was one. It could hurl things into the Fade. Sounds great. I'll take it. Well, but that would include you too. Whoever activates it disappears. Then how'd you test it? Ronath did. He was a veil jumper. We told him not to, but, well, hope he makes it back someday. I meant to tell you, I gave Asan some leftovers the other day. Oh? How do you like them? He ate everything in two bites, so that part was easy. Maybe that's what upset his stomach. How do you know? I could smell it. Did you get the biscuits I made? The ones I left in your room? I did. A little hard, but they tasted good. And to thank you. You... ate them? All of them? Why? What's wrong? Um... well... Bellara? Those were dog biscuits for his son. Wait, do griffins even like dog biscuits? Did you see the biscuits I left you? Did a song get them? And not... well... you? Yeah. And your note, Asan biscuits inside, do not eat. So I didn't, and he did. Oh, good. Did he like them? Three squawks after the last bite says he did. Great. And he didn't start floating or anything? No. Why would you ask? No reason. Ballara, did you put something different in the last batch of biscuits? Oh, I didn't make those. Lucanus did. We've been helping each other in the kitchen. Ah, uh, maybe ask Lucanus to use a little less red pepper. It makes Hassan feel bloated. Why can't you tell him? He'll do it for you, no questions asked. Me? He'll make me pay for it. Do you get many dark spawn up in Arlington? Sometimes, but not often. We don't have much of a deep roads up there either. Thought the deep roads went damn near everywhere. We'll find the beginnings of one here or there, but never more than that. Huh. Wonder why that is. There was one place with kind of a deep roads, 
right on the southern edge of the forest. What do you mean, was? Veil jumpers that found it destroyed the entrance, sealed themselves in, left a note telling us not to enter. We sent a second patrol right up to the debris. They heard laughing for two days, then nothing. Well, that's a problem. Those veil jumpers, the ones who collapsed the deep roads entrance, reminds me of Ramish. Who's that? Warden, I know. Found some trouble in an old thag and collapsed a mountain on it. Some of the things he said he saw there, though. Hmm. Your story just reminded me of it. Oh. Creepy. So, Tosh said something interesting about you and Asan. Oh? Hmm. Can't imagine what that would have been. Said that you were the one who covered him in olive oil. I was trying to make him go faster. I thought it would decrease wind resistance. It meant he spent an hour sliding around the kitchen while Tosh laughed themselves to death. The theory was sound. Oh, hey, Davrin. Asan's feathers, when he molts, what are you doing with them? Why don't I like where this is going? It's nothing bad. I was just thinking we could make pillows with them. Sleeping on Asan's old feathers is weird. What's weird? Waste not, want not, right? I smell them all day. At least I get a break at night. <laughs>